And here's Taters hard at work. And today on Mass of Taters on the Mississippi, resupply and trying to control Taters drinking so I can actually get through my audiobook. And probably lock 19 later in the day. Oh yeah, and the lock that is the big drop. <laughs> The locks are all fun and the scale is kind of cool from inside in a canoe, but we've been looking forward to this one the entire time. Supposedly it is the biggest drop since lock one, possibly the biggest drop including lock one. Expectations are high. We are both just constantly appreciative of the lack of significant bugs out here. We do get the occasional mosquito. Sometimes they're a little bad at night, but nothing like the headwaters. And I mean, we did manage the headwaters. It just kind of wears on you. Today should be eventful. We have lock 19, which is the big drop, the one we've been looking forward to, and we have a resupply. So I am currently in a state of anticipation of all the yumminess Jen is going to get, which will not come crashing down until she arrives back from the resupply saying they don't have all the things I requested. And we are off in depressingly sunny weather. So not far past where we camp, we ended up uh, getting into all these cabins, which have nice manicured lawns that make us kind of drool. <laughs> and we're having a very successful turtle morning tater <laughs> turtle uh, sighting. So many little turtles back here. This is the second house we've seen that has set up spare navigational buoys as yard decorations. One red and one green. And back out into the main channel for a while. just stopped by for a break and uh, ran into this guy. We're trying to give him his space. But we're videoing because we're kinky like that. Hey, this one's like a double decker. Yeah. That's cool with the cars on top. And it's got two sets of train tracks because we saw trains go in both directions. So we are once again hanging out in Marina. We are uh, basically Fort Madison doing a resupply. And we ain't the only paddlers. So I thought the mayflies were cool when we would spook them on a tree and they would flutter out all around us. People we met at the beach party yesterday laughed at me when I said that they think they're pretty gross. And uh, now I see why when they form these mats like this. So many dead mayflies all over everywhere. Walking down to Aldi for a resupply. We followed our usual plan of having me stay back and guard the boat. This marina was both just ear-shatteringly loud and kind of precarious as boats were coming and going. These guys are also doing the source to sea paddle. The younger guy is 12 and apparently going for the Guinness Book of World Record for youngest person to paddle the entire river. I ended up having to move because the dock was just turning into too much of a zoo. And we are finally getting out of here. That was a fairly miserable stop, at least from my side. And now we had another 60 miles of big open water with almost no current since we were headed towards the lock. Four o'clock and we still have 13 miles to go to the lock. We are just taking a break because it's been one big long section. No break from the sun or anything. <laughs> and the water is so uh, dirty looking, it's not exactly the sort of water I want to swim in. We're coming up on lock 19. It looks like this guy just completed a double lockage through, so as long as there wasn't one more tow right behind him, we should be in luck. Lock 19, this is downbound canoe. Oh, we're downbound now, are we? Yeah, 19 back. We're about 15 minutes out. Will we be able to go through? That's a worrying delay. 
Uh oh. <laughs> At least they're considering. They're not like, nope. <laughs> Team back to the southbound canoe. Downbound canoe? Uh, well, just come on, head on down in there, and you'll see a, our little our work flat pontoon there tied off to the wall. Just hang out in there. We're supposed to have some pleasure boats to go up, but I haven't seen them, so. We'll have to get her shut back up and fill her up for you, and then we'll take you down. Got it. Thank you. That was an odd interaction. <laughs> okay, so we were kind of cleared to go through, maybe. It sounds like they cycled the lock for some pleasure boats that were coming up, and uh, they're off drinking somewhere. So, uh, yeah. Also, this is a bloody massive lock. And dam. Can't forget the dam. And this is, of course, the one that we've been looking forward to because, per all the documentation, it is actually a uh, much bigger lock with a bigger drop than what we've been uh, going through. For the last week or so. Also, we just completely busted our rhomboids going across like 30 miles of open water in the hot sun. So this is, <laughs> this, is, this is we are fully expecting this to be the climax of today. <laughs> so we're used to getting some current when they're filling the chamber. Uh, this one's interesting because it's actually fizzing all around us. Yeah, this lock is already more exciting than the other ones. We're drifting toward the lock at a rapid speed indeed and at long last we're getting to do the big lock so this lock is much bigger and they actually don't have to put the barges through in two pieces Once again, following the theme of the only consistency between the locks is the inconsistency. They didn't have ropes, and this time we were directed to hold on to these little hooks that you can see on that plunger behind Jen. Since that hook was missing, she held on to the ladder, which worked until we basically uh, ran out of ladder. The drop here is 38 feet, which is way, way more than what we've been doing lately. Most of the locks have been in the 3 to 12 foot range. And unfortunately, the video never really captures the scale. Yeah, up. Oh. Mush, Blondie. <laughs> okay, we, we are impressed by lock 19. It is way cooler than all those little uh, three-foot dinky locks we had to go through. <laughs> now we want to go ride it again. Okay, that was cool. We wish we could just go back and forth, but we figure they'd probably tell us no eventually. <laughs> And now we come right out into a taters bridge. This just has all the things. And we hear the current's going to be faster. So per the lock employee, every time they run that, it is uh, 38 million gallons uh, flowed through. Million gallons per foot of drop drops 38 feet. And the more entertaining thing is a half hour before we showed up, they ran it for the two guys in kayaks. So this is kind of cool. It's like uh, the Coast Guard are the people that put the uh, channel buoys out with big cinder blocks. This place has everything, industrial noise, the smell of the sewage treatment plant, a waterfall. <laughs> I dislike Jen's choice of camp potential campsites here. I'm pretty sure she picks the buggiest parts of the shore to try and go up. So we got covered in bugs and she didn't find a place to camp. So we're basically just worse off than we were about two minutes ago. So somewhat reluctantly, we started looking for a campsite because it is really nice out there. And after the uh, lock, the current picked up a little bit. We came around this corner after Mud Island was a little too tall and uh, Jen fell in love with the sandbar. So I think I'm stuck in a sandbar at risk of them flushing the lock again and all this going underwater. This is not necessarily our prettiest camp ever, but it is, I think, our most convenient camp ever. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> so it might look like Jen is locked in a battle right now, and she pretty much is because the cool hand sail uh, 
requires being folded into thirds, and it, the instructions are unclear. The Jen said she could do sense. it. I've done it every single time without you watching me before. <laughs> I think you're breaking my sail. Take 12. Blondie folds the sail. Eventually. New plan. We just order like a set of 20 of them. So each time we unfurl the sail, we don't have to pack it back away. Oh, oh, oh. She told me it was so easy. <laughs> okay, now undo it and show it to me again. I've kind of been hoping to swim, but considering this uh, water is a little bit uh, debris filled and we are right downstream from a big industrial uh, facility that was discharging unknown things into the water. And there were all sorts of interesting smells coming from said industrial facility. I think I'll probably pass tonight. So most of today was a very long and tiring and kind of boring paddle over big open water with the views not changing much. Uh, plus side, at least it was barely windy and the wind was actually helping us a little bit at the end. Because uh, if we had to do that 30 miles with a headwind, that would have been memorable. We probably would not have gotten across it. Anyway, the highlight was Lock 19. Very exciting end to the day. And we ended at this super convenient camp. Home sweet home for the night. Also, almost forgot another major highlight for today. We saw a turtle laying eggs which gave us hope that maybe sometime later on this trip, I will see the turtles hatch and run down to the water. He could have been pooping. 